Amber Kay, in her book Ritual Craft, which is an excellent resource for writing ritual, uh, says, Ritual embraces creativity and innovation as well as tradition and consistency. And that's so true. You have to find a balance for your own practice between those two. Because if you are pushing the envelope just to push the envelope, it has no meaning for you. You're just doing it to say, oh, I'm so cool, I did this in my ritual. What did it mean for you, though? Ritual is all about finding the meaning for yourself and growing. Um, but if you are pushing the envelope while kind of bringing in other elements that mean something to you and help enhance your personal practice that are more consistent or perhaps traditional, depending on your own path and study and things like that and preference, then you're finding more meaning in it for you and you're doing it to further your growth as opposed to just being the cool kid on the block that's doing such and such in their rituals. She also says that we can find inspiration because the art of ritual is always evolving and everything we learn has the potential to make our rituals more effective. And that's very true. In one of the books that I bought specifically for the research for this ritual, Pop Culture Magic by Taylor Elwood, he has an excellent quote that goes along with that. And he says, the new literacy of the occult is a literacy that challenges the mage to explore every field of science, every television show, and everything else that he or she does not have experience with, and find within all of that practical magical techniques and ideas that can help the mage grow. Magic is everything around us. It's time we began actively to work magic with the goal being to do more than what others have already done. We use everything in ritual. Spirituality is about our view of the universe and our view of our place in it and deity. If everything we encounter affects that view of the universe and everything that we become, which is shaped by everything we encounter, affects that, then why should that not be incorporated into our ritual practice? A lot of people within pagan paths view everything as magical. They see the magic and the mundane and still those people turn their noses up at using pop culture and magic. Which is odd, because if everything is magical, pop culture then should also have magic abilities. So there's no real taboo, necessarily, against using pop culture in your workings. Or science, or history, or anything else that you are interested in. Your hobbies, etc. Ritual is tailored to you when you write it, so you should play on all of those strengths. You should use everything that you have to write your ritual. Since I don't cover writing ritual a lot in this, and I've talked about these sources endlessly in my other videos, but they were in my little outline for this workshop, you should look into the Ritual Craft book by Amber Kay and Azula Erin Kay, which will help you in pretty much writing any ritual that you ever wanted to write. And Elements of Ritual by Deborah Lip, which is an amazing resource explaining a lot of the different whys and hows of how, why we do each step um, of ritual. Or you can check out my website, Roots of Ritual, which has pretty much combined both of those ideas and added to them exponentially as it will grow over the years. So again, that links in the sacred space. So how do we find these themes that we can work with for ritual? And if you're not familiar with the use of the word theme in this context, it's a literary thing. A theme is the overall idea of a work, pretty much. So when I'm talking about themes, I'm talking about like a Yule ritual that focuses on the myth of the Oak King and Holly King or something like that. So how do we find these? We can first start with the Sabbaths themselves, for example, or any other holiday that you're working with. You can start by examining them and really focusing on the myth itself. Like the O King and Holly King example, that's so overused, yet it's so meaningful, and a lot of people don't realize the true meaning of it until they have reviewed it and really meditated on it and focused on it themselves and found their own meaning. Some authors present the common interpretation of a myth as the only interpretation of a myth when mythology, like all literature, has endless interpretations and none of them are wrong. I have an excellent example from Ellen Dugan in Autumn Equinox. She get, takes the Persephone myth and kind of gives it a new spin so that Persephone isn't a victim, as some people view the myth to make her out to be, in that she chooses to go to the underworld and 
live there for half of the year. And that's kind of a controversial interpretation, but it's an interpretation that's just as valid as the original one. So by examining those myths, you find new interpretations that are maybe more meaningful to you, or new interpretations that you can examine and find if they resonate with you at least, and kind of understand other people's takes on them as well. You could also use new myths as opposed to doing a Beltane ritual with the marriage of the god and goddess, as in as common in Wiccan mythology, you could work with the settling of Ireland or something with the sovereignty of the earth. Those are both very common Beltane themes, but they're not often used in Beltane rituals because everyone focuses on fertility and possibly the beginning of summer or spring, depending on how you view that one. If you've kind of tapped yourself out on mythology, you can start examining the secular aspects of each holiday because they each have those. They have the things that have progressed so far from what has historically been done or they're seen as cliche that not a lot of people think to use them in their ritual practice because they aren't as spir spiritual, again, if we're separating the spiritual from the mundane. And those might include for Halloween, for example, trick-or-treating, or scary movies, and the concept of fear, um, haunted houses, costumes, things like that. And the examples I have for the workshop are also on Roots of Ritual. The Amber Kay's theme from Ritual Craft, Children at Your Door. What tricks and treats do we offer new generations in the world, and how do we wish to change it? And also Amber Kay's Dash Tracks of Candy. In what ways are we like trick-or-treaters, begging from others, and can strangers provide us what we need? I also have Halloween masks. When do we find it necessary to wear a mask every day? What are we hiding, and how could we shed or strengthen those masks? Those are three very meaningful examples of what you can do with a secular theme that may not seem overtly spiritual and incorporate it into ritual to help you examine yourself and your world and help you grow. So those are great ways to, to add new elements to ritual as well.